I'm so excited to announce that we are relaunching blogging and we're going to launch it on bodysex.com. And this is what Betty and I did for over a decade. We would write every day. We had a stable of writers and it was just wonderful to express ourselves. Um, there's such limited writing on sexuality and it's really introducing our new generation of body sex leaders. I love reading their stories because we all take body sex workshops for a different reason. Um, and we all get something different out of it. So just like when we go around the circle in a workshop and share, our takeaways from that workshop are so different. So I was so excited <laughs> to read this next crop of blog posts that we have coming in. So let's just kind of hit the highlights and break it down a little bit. Um, there was Tasha's uh, oh. post. Um, uh, and her little tagline, the title of hers was anything I do to any part of my body will be done solely for my pleasure. Woo That's right. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> it's the new feminist anthem. <laughs> right. And I remember, um, she was assisting at the workshop and part of being an assistant is you show your vulva to the group and describe it. And, um, Tash has a belly like mine. And I remember at her first workshop, it was hard for her to get comfortable. Um, and we talked before the workshop about how she was concerned. Would she even be able to do that? Would she, would she be able to show her vulva comfortably? So we practiced before. I always practice before just because it kind of, it just kind of helps calm my nerves about it. Um, and, and you reframed it for her. And how did you reframe it? This was very powerful. I, I reframed it, uh, because she had called her belly, her Buddha belly. And I said, well, it's my goddess belly. Um, and yeah, it just makes a difference. And she found it didn't get in her way, um, that she was able to maneuver just fine. So it's all in a shift in attitude. And a shift in how we feel about ourselves and our bodies. How we perceive ourselves. Yes. And that's exactly what body sex is. Holding mm -hmm. the space you walked next to her without judgment or control. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. Yeah. And, and her blog is just fantastic. So, you know, I, I, I really hope you take time to read the whole thing. Um, the next one was Frances's and Frances, <laughs> you worked with her in person. It was one of Betty's last workshops and also virtually. It's interesting when we're in our seventies mm -hmm. and we're looking for transformation and we think always like it's too late if we're not in our twenties and we don't make the connections that it's over. And Frances is a testament that it's never too late. So she took the last workshop that Betty and I held. We didn't know it at the time before COVID. Um, and she came in and she had the most perfectly quaffed hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there wasn't a hair out of place. And uh, we worked virtually during COVID because she wanted another body sex hit. Sometimes we need to go back. And that was really great to get the one-on-one. -on -one. It's interesting how the live group and the one-on-one -on -one virtual feed each other. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning of one of our sessions, she popped on Zoom and she had shaven her head. And I was like, oh, Francis, you look great. Mm -hmm. And she did. She looked like G.I. Jane, badass. <laughs> and it was really a, a symbol. It was symbolic for her of her transformation and for her to make the connection. And it's a struggle for all of us, but she got there. I'm just so proud of Francis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. She's like toasting with champagne. I'm um, in that picture. It's just, it's, she looks so relaxed and joyful. Um, she's an orgasmic woman and owns it proudly. Lakota is another amazing young woman where we've watched her journey and transformation. Um, after she took her first workshop, she decided she wanted to lead body sex workshops. So her post is about the circle where she first served as an assistant. I had followed my heart and found purpose in my life. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's such a joy. So she came to a retreat as a participant mm -hmm. and what, five, six months later, she was assisting. 
Mm-hmm. She's very self-reflective. And you see that when you read her blog. And she really kind of breaks down what it's like to assist mm-hmm. for the first time. Yes. And all of the feelings and emotions. And Lakota is the one who made all our vulva rugs. She's quite talented. And she's become kind of a, a, a real important piece of the next generation of body sex. Mm-hmm. So introducing Lakota. (laughs) (laughs) And then we have Jessica, uh, who is from Vienna, Austria, and also from Cape Town, Africa. And she has only worked with you virtually. And the title of her post is Body Sex Was My Way Home. Well, this was during COVID lockdown, Mm -hmm. where I took the work virtual and I wasn't sure if women were going to be able to make the connections. And Jessica was struggling with painful penetration and and really coming to a place in her life where she wanted to make change. Um, And it worked virtually. Mm -hmm. And I've never met her in person, but I feel so connected to Jessica. And she's so wonderful and warm. And she wants to take the work to Cape Town, to South Africa. And she's moving in a few weeks and body sex helped her kind of make that decision to make that change. And she's just a natural, it's it just, it, it's effortless for Jessica. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a born leader and I can't wait to see um, her perspective on body sex and where she takes the work. Yes. Yes. Her blog post is very engaging, just very real, very warm. Um, you get a good sense of, of who she is. She's been working um, with refugee women Mm -hmm. and helping them connect to their bodies. Mm -hmm. So it's, she's just special. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, truly. Um, Emily is also working in our certification program. She focused on writing about one of the rituals, genital show and tell. Uh, And the title of her post is Vulvas Are Pure Beauty. And I feel like it's a love letter to vulvas. And a genital show and tell. So she took the first retreat we had post COVID um, and instantly, you know, you just see it in someone. And I love the way she talks about how healing, right? Because she is an advanced person as far as lifestyle choices and experiences, but still the power of genital show and tell of simply looking at your vulva, finding all the parts and being witnessed Mm -hmm. and seeing the diversity and the beauty, it's always powerful and it's always profound. And she captured it so perfectly. So perfectly. And she found she healed shame that she didn't even know that she had. Well, leave it to Betty Dotson, the bottom line. I mean, she's going to get you. <laughs> she's going to challenge you. She's going to give a good punch to that clip. That's right. I mean, that's what... <laughs> Oh, and then we have Meta's blog post. I always love, I was trying to find like little taglines from her her blog posts to just put as a teaser at the beginning. And there were just so many. <laughs> she has, she's just, she's a great writer and she's even writing in English, which isn't her first language, but it's just so beautifully done. And I mean, I think I could reread hers over and over again and find other pieces of it to draw out. And what I love is that she was already well on her journey and she was orgasmic. You know, body sex isn't just about connecting to the orgasm. It's so much more. Mm -hmm. And for her, the piece was community and sisterhood Mm -hmm. and being able to feel that she made the connection to self-pleasure. She made the connection to positive body image. She made the connection of kind of boarding her idea of, uh, of lifestyle choices and where she could be comfortable within her monogamous marriage. But the last piece, sisterhood. Yes, yes. Mm. And when she says, I left my self-doubt in the circle. Whew. I mean, you know, that's that's what we need. We need community to help us heal. So you will be hearing from them once a month. We're going to have a new topic with new blogs and you can follow them and their personal journey and hear their voices. And what I'm so excited about is the diversity Mm -hmm. in orientation, race, ages, perspective, experience. It's all there. Betty would be so proud 